Who asked you? Who asked me? It's time we get down to the nitty gritty. Who asked us? Who asked us? The unsolicited opinions of two romance authors. Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast. Who asked us the unsolicited opinions of two romance authors? I'm Jolene Navarro, and I'm on my last day of spring break. Boo. I know. And I'm Storm Navarro, and I am my sister's maid of honor. Yay! Yay. (laughs) And this is actually our first podcast in like three or four weeks without one of the other kids. Oh yeah, they've always visited. and They've been visiting, so they've been included in the podcast. So Mm -hmm. it's back to just you and me. Yeah, last time it was Katrina and Mark, and we talked about dyslexia. Mm Mm-hmm. That was a really good conversation. Yeah, it was. This time, we're going to talk about pets and animals. Yes. In my upcoming book, there's a um, character called Big Mac, and he's a mixed shepherd that was injured in the line of duty, so he's a retired canine officer. That's cute. um, So he's with the um, hero, and he helps a lot in the story. So it got me to thinking about how many stories I write with animals, Mm -hmm. just organically, but also on covers. I mean, what's the thing, the joke about, you know, the cat and the puppy videos, right? People are obsessed with cute cute cats, cute dogs, horses. There's this whole romance genre about girls and their horses. Katrina wants to leave... Of the wedding at the end on a on horseback. She does. She wants to. She just popped that up to me this weekend. She's like, <laughs> I think we should leave on horseback. I'm like, where are we going to keep the horses during the wedding? Right. And where, where are you, you going to go? Because we live out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so her wedding, they, her and Mark, her fiance, want to have the wedding out here on my parents' property, which we're super excited about turning our property into a wedding venue. I mean, come on. I'm a romance writer. Turning my property into a wedding venue is so exciting. Right. And it's been really fun talking about it and having all the ideas everybody has and like what it's going to look like. But we're a little concerned about her for dog. She's going to bring all the dogs, right? Yes. Are they going to be in the wedding? I don't know. I don't think so. Elvis, she's had. Elvis used to live. He's my first grandbaby, I think. She found him in Rock Springs and brought him home. He's a little mix of small dogs. A terrier mix. Yeah. So he's little and he's the old man now. He was a little puppy because he could fit in your hand when she brought him home. He has a little but, crooked um, eye when he stares at you. And <laughs> then she's cute. got, she's got, what's Cayenne? Cayenne? We have no idea what Cayenne is. He's some kind of hunting bird dog yeah. he looks like it's very red very sleek like long pointing yeah. nose and a curly really. tail mm-hmm. he's got an interesting personality and then there is deacon and bishop the they're, big boys they're brothers and they're labrador boxer yeah she went to ohio on a day trip to get them yeah. from actually my distant cousins that live in ohio yeah yeah so that was kind of <laughs> she was cool. scared to tell you i know she's living on her own she's got her own job her own house and she like it was a year ago she didn't even tell me because she asked me to babysit kyan and elvis and i was like okay why and she's like oh we're going on a trip like a road trip and i was like okay and on their way back she finally texted me texted me a picture of the two dogs she's like this is what we got and i was like oh my god (laughs) yeah bishop is absolutely beautiful they're big dogs and deacon i think they took deacon because he was one of the dogs that no one was going to take home yeah he's kind of dorky looking like (laughs) he didn't get the right mix like bishop Bishop. got the right mix between the two parents right so he's this big beautiful black dog yeah and then his brother It so just cute, doesn't. Though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure if mentally he's his brain got put in the right place either. Aww, he's but so he's cute. sweet. He's yes. a sweet dog, and he minds well. But oh mm-hmm. my goodness, they're big. They're so cute. But so a lot of people love their animals, right? So right. Katrina's animals are her babies, and mm-hmm. she she has a cat also. Oh yeah, that they rescued Whisper. Yeah, and they have a um, guinea pig that they rescued. Yeah, and then they had they because guinea pigs are social animals, so right. they got a another guinea pig. Oh, so they have two guinea pigs. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, they God. did have bunnies. But yes. the bunnies were more expensive. And they had made a room, like a whole room. He put this 
like elaborate little yeah. setup for them and to keep it clean and to keep yeah. Yeah, everything. So they ended up, the bunnies found a new loving home. Yeah. And then, oh, and they had a saltwater fish tank, which is a lot oh, of yeah. maintenance. And I mm -hmm. think his mom actually wanted it. So they gave it to his mom. Yeah. So yeah, they were always, it's like every time you go over there, like what new animal do you have? Right. Um, but she was that way growing up. Yes. She, she always wanted to always had, she'd save find the stray animal. Or all of that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of people like that. I was thinking of my writer friends, like on social media. Terry has her puppies on social media, especially Oh my Charm, gosh. I love right? Charm. Her new puppy She's Charm. She's so cute. Of course, we all knew Bliss. And then it was really yes, sad when, was when she had to say goodbye to Bliss. But Charm is adorable. And she's got Princess. And then there's Finn. He's he's kind of like the laid back guy that's always Finn. in the sh background, you know. <laughs> he's like, I just want someone to love me. I'm fine. <laughs> um, and then, well, Sasha. Sasha had. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> Sasha had her cat for the longest time. Oh, yeah. Gerard. Gerard was like the overlord of their property. And, yeah, he was a and good she, cat. And he, was, he had his like. I think at one point they were telling her that he needed his own Facebook page or his own yeah. Instagram page because he was really popular. And as pets do, it's a lesson in life that life doesn't go mm. on forever. And she lost him. But her husband got her a new little puppy. Oh, my goodness. So little cute. crooked tooth. It's an mess. underbite. She has an underbite. <laughs> Oh my God! Is she like a Scottish Terrier? What I is she? I don't know. She kind of looks black like a fox with, Terrier. With whiskers. Yeah, she's a little shaggy black dog. Yeah, she's adorable, and so she's always yeah. chasing the squirrels or the butterflies in the backyard. Mm -hmm. So this is a lot of their social media posts. Is their pets, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and of course Terry. I think her new release is the two the Dalmatians are on the cover. Yes. Are was so it a cute. spot of trouble? Yes, yeah, Spot of Trouble. It and looks the, so cute. Well, and it's the opening scene is like mistaken identity with the Dalmatians. And oh, then it's course. because of the Dalmatians that they meet each other, right? Right. So it's a perfect meet cute and mm -hmm. using pets. Yeah. Uh, so we use pets a lot in books to show mm -hmm. characters and to set up really cute scenes that you wouldn't be able to have without the pets. Right. Um, so trying to th do you know, I mean, I know people that follow just, um, remember the grumpy cat? Yes. Yeah. That cat passed away too. He did, but he had a huge following. Mm -hmm. Well, and Kelly, she, um, she, our she, friend Kelly. Yeah. She has horses, a beautiful field horses. Yeah. They're absolutely gorgeous. The kind mm -hmm. you see like in frozen. And so I love watching her, um, on Instagram too, or Facebook. Mm -hmm. And when, especially when the babies are born. Yeah. So we take that as authors, people just connect to animals, mm -hmm. right? I agree. What's your favorite animal? Horses. I horses. love, I grew up with horses. I loved horses. So if you could only have one pet or one animal in your life, it would be a horse? Yes, but I always, okay, so I grew up with horses. We always had them. I right. actually, my first job was working in stables. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I, I put a lot of miles on horses that, um, and did a little bit of training and, of course, took care of the stables, which is mm -hmm. not glorious or glamorous in any way. <laughs> but um, someone's got to do all the scooping right. and dumping and feeding. and mm. Well, we had automatic Cleaning. waters. Yeah, those was great. Grooming. But, yeah, the pat you know, just keeping. Because horses are very high maintenance. You yes. can't just have a horse and ignore it. Actually, pets should not. And it's so sad when you see a dog that's just left in the backyard with yeah. no social, you know. So horses are a big commitment because mm -hmm. they're a big animal that need a lot of food and a lot of maintenance. Yeah. Their hoofs, their coats, all of this. So, yeah, that's what that was my first job. And, of course, we had them growing up. My mom had horses growing up. Right. So generations. My grandmother had horses growing up. Her father actually trained horses. Oh. So, yeah, we have a long generation of horses. I mean, your dad used to go horseback riding together because mm -hmm. he grew up on a ranch with horses. Dad had a horse. Mm -hmm. They tank. had horses on the. Oh, well, yeah. Between the two of us, he bought Tank. I had Sophia and he bought Tank. Um, so that was in Houston. Um, oh. so that was, yeah, you had a, like a stable area in mm -hmm. Houston where we kept them. Cause of course you live in a suburb, you can't have the horse in the backyard. Right. So, um, we always had horses in our life, but when I had kids, I think you, my second one, we had, um, horses up until we moved here and the, yeah. we have enough land, but it wasn't fenced in and it's not really good. It's rocky. It's super rocky. It's yeah. beautiful. It's like on a hillside. Mm -hmm. So lots of trees, but not conducive for horses. Not right. good. So we haven't had horses in our lives in over 20 years. There was and the a... kids keep us really busy. So keeping y'all fed and right. 
<laughs> maintained and yeah we're high maintenance high maintenance <laughs> kids um i do remember there was a small spot of time where we had bailey yeah that was one of mandy's horses yeah we it was we were just keeping bailey for a little while yeah and we'd ride bailey a little bit yeah but i grew up with horses showed horses um trained horses i love i love horses um i probably wouldn't go back to owning horses again unless i had property or stables that are conducive for having right. horses do you know that tate and bridger have never ridden a horse I, they say that i don't think that's true i think it is well tate can't say it anymore him and lissa went horseback riding oh i didn't know that yeah he saved that um rare african bird that was following him at the ymca remember do you remember that story yes he was coming out of the ymca and this yes. white everyone bird, thought it was like a weird pigeon yeah, everyone else was like trying to avoid it and <laughs> tate's like something's not right here he's like staring at <laughs> it was like kinda, following him kind of looked like the handler tate did yeah the tate looked so like found out later the tate looks like the, the the man who handles the bird and so the bird kept him kind of following tate and then it flew at him and he was like ah yeah the bird was trying to communicate with him because the bird at this point was scared thirsty, and thirsty and he wasn't meant to live in the wild on his I own know, poor baby. and so tate's like this bird has to belong to someone it's not a normal bird right and so he called the local animal um control and they, there had been someone reported missing. And it's, it's some kind super of rare, rare parrot. African parrot yeah. or something that lives in a sanctuary. Yeah. So um, they do movies and TV shows and stuff like that based on animals. I mean, I love The Lion King. So I've always loved lions. Do you have a favorite book? Or... Black Beauty, I grew up. That was my favorite. Oh, yeah. That was a book, right? Yes, it was a book. And you read the book. I read the books before there was a movie. Yeah. I loved... Because there's actually... The author wrote several. There's like um, Black Beauty, and then there's a red horse, and mm -hmm. they wrote several. Oh, the black... I'm confusing that. Black Beauty and Black Stallion are two different stories. I oh, always get them confused. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Black Stallion is the one that has like the red trotter and some other things. Black Beauty, really sad story about abuse of horses. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen it. Should I watch it? Black Stallion? Oh, wait, which one are you talking about? Black Beauty? Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Which one is the story about? I get them confused. Uh-oh. The Black Stallion <laughs> is the one that became a movie, I believe. Yes. I'm sure they have a movie about mm -hmm. Black Beauty. My favorite horse movie is Spirited Away. No, oh my God, not Spirited Away. <laughs> Everyone's going to be so mad at me that's a ghibli movie studio ghibli studios film what i'm trying to say is spirit the horse movie the wild. but i love that movie because that's a movie that grandma showed me in katrina it's and a beautiful we always movie. watched it it's an animation cartoon yeah i also i really like um secretariat that's, oh, that's based off one. the true story of mm -hmm. the racehorse so horses are amazing. Horses are beautiful creatures. They are. There's this fantasy about horses, right? That I think a lot of, um, especially young girls, mm -hmm. have. Um, I mean, I collected like model horses, and of course, I also had real horses. But I know so many people that their childhood dream was to own a horse, right? So horses come naturally in my stories because to me, animals are characters. They're not just yeah. little um, they have little personalities, pieces. right? I don't like it when a, an animal is just a prop piece to get a cute scene or something. Right? The, the character, the animal, needs to be a well developed character too. Yeah. So some of my animals have these really complicated backstories, or. <laughs> They have great backstories. It helps reveal the story for the hero or heroine, mm -hmm. too. Oh, there's this great new show on Netflix. I forget what it's called, but it's this guy. He's in California, and he's pretty known, well-known in his area for being um, a dog trainer. And he'll go in, and the show follows him. People will call him in and be like, I need your help. My dog's... You know, it's kind of like one of those... Whisper? Canine Intervention. That's what it's called. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, I love dogs. I love animals. I think that you have to be careful riding animals if you don't know about that animal. Like the culture of horses are very particular. Mm -hmm. I remember one time in lit one of my literature classes, we were reading, and I think it was all the pretty horses. And the owner goes through this like generations of horses on the breeding, right? And I remember my instructor going, that doesn't seem very realistic. I wouldn't imagine anyone would memorize a lineage of horses but that's not true if you breed horses you would actually probably go way back to the founding um line for that breed so yeah i would go back so people that are interested in horses they know top and bottom the breed and the lines of the breed for that particular 
So when you have a cowboy, what breed of horse does he work with? More than right. likely, he's going to have quarter horse or something along that line. Arabians are a little high strung. Now, there is no absolutes. And you will find someone who likes Arabians, who is maybe on the ranch. But for most of the time, quarter horses are bred to do that type of work. So mm -hmm. you need to be aware of the breeds of horses and what they do. Because right. um, I'll see where someone will have a bunch of different type of horses on one ranch. I mean, breeds like all over the place. And you typically wouldn't see that on a ranch. Typically, you would see a certain type of horse right. and not a million different breeds. And for a horse breeder, they're going to have a specialty. You know, even like a cutting horse as opposed to a racing quarter horse. Mm -hmm. You know, if you raise cutting horses, well, those are quarter horses, but you're not going to be racing them also. Right. But if you do racing horses, you probably aren't going to be breeding for the quarter horse line. Right. I mean, for the um, cutting horse mm -hmm. or roping right or yeah. different type of thing now sometimes you might take a racing horse that didn't do well and they might turn it into a barrel horse but typically you're you're breeding a line for um, a specific temperament for that mm -hmm. type of job that you want that horse to do so do you have any characters in your books any animal characters? i hope i have characters in my books <laughs> Do you have any animal characters in your book? Uh, in my paranormal romance, I have a little hedgehog named Buddy. And he's kind of like a anchor for the female character, the heroine. Authors can use animals to go deeper into the character, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one. There are several reasons that an author would use animals. Well, first of all, people love animals. Yep. And if you can put an animal on a cover, that can be a really good selling point. But if there's an animal on the cover, they need to be true to the animal in the book and not just use it for one scene. Right. And then forget about it. Right. right. Like the little hedgehog. Does mm -hmm. he go throughout the story? No. What happens to him? She eventually hands him off to one of the children because she meets these other Nephilim children that her friend Val, who's a fallen angel, takes care of. They're orphans. And it's kind of like that transition from her as a child and needing to be the taken needs. care of by her father. So you use the animal to transition her from like her own childhood to adulthood. Like, right. And she's handing it off to the next child who needs this animal. Yes. So as authors, we can use animals to bring people together. I think about Terry's book where the dogs are mistaken, mistaken identity. So you can use animals to bring people together. I think the way that your hero or heroine treats animals can show. They talk about don't tell, but show, right? And you can use animals to show a lot. Right. Um, I think about the opening scene I have in Texas Daddy. The heroine has had a lot of things in her life that has closed her off emotionally. Mm -hmm. She gave a child up for adoption when she was 17 and she hid it from her. She went to her great aunt and hid it from her father, right? Because she didn't want to disappoint her father. Um, she lost her mother when she was young. So she has these series of things that keeps on closing her off where she feels guilty and she doesn't feel worthy. So she comes home because she was in the Navy and then um, she does extreme sports. Well, she was in a car accident, so her knee is pretty much busted up. So she comes home because she can't do her job and she needs a place to recover. Well, when I first put the manuscript in, she's really closed off. And the hero has been in the books. He's a single dad that's very outgoing, very friendly, very personable. Mm -hmm. So when they first meet, my editor sent it back to me going I, she is not likable she is way oh. too bitter or too hard right. she's too hard so i was like well because mm. you get to know her and you're gonna know why she's hard right right so i had to keep her hard but at the same time how could i show her inner softness right. that this hardness is just a shell right and so what i ended up doing is it's a rainy day it's raining and the thunderstorm lightning comes in and the hero was on a horseback on the property riding fences so he needs to go find shelter to get out of the lightning, right? Right. So he's on his horseback. So he's actually, that was fun, riding through the rain on his horse, little adrenaline going on. And then he gets to like the old cabin with the um, little car, an open car shed place. And he puts the horse in there and he sees this weird thing going on. And it's a person with a bike and all hunched over in mud. And it's her. And she had been out pushing herself on the bike when the storm came in. And her brace and her knee got jammed up in the chain. Oh. So she's like, can't get the bike off of her. And she's got mud all over her. And he goes to help her. And of course, she doesn't like taking help. But he realizes inside this whole time, she's been protecting a fawn, like a newborn fawn that she found. Um, and at first he tells her, you're not supposed to pick up a fawn. Because mother deer will hide fawn and then like go away, but always come back. But she said that the, the mother wasn't coming back. 
And she couldn't leave this unprotected baby alone because the mother was dead. I can't remember exactly how I said that. Mm -hmm. So to me, this first of all showed her inner core, her inner self that she wasn't, she would put herself at risk to protect something weaker and smaller. Right. right? But it also started the groundwork on her guilt as a mother giving her child up when she was 17 which she's going to come around to realizing it was the right choice for her and the child and the family that adopted her son. Mm -hmm. But so I'm said I'm using this baby fawn to show all of this. I'm not right. telling you, I'm showing you and I'm giving you a glimpse and the hero, because the hero wouldn't have, if she would have been that completely hard shell, why would have he like came back, you know, talk to her or right. what would make him interested in her at all? Right. So he gets to see in their first meeting, this, inside past her hard shell mm -hmm. to this woman who would risk herself to save a baby deer right that's really good right so that's that's a, that's also a lesson <sighs> we're on such showing. good writers <laughs> that's also a oh lesson God. on showing versus telling right because a lot of people's like how do you you know and so it's not so much i didn't tell you why she had a hard shell or mm -hmm. all this but i showed you through the baby deer right so i think that animals can be a great source. Now the baby deer, then I had to also be conscious of, we had this baby deer and I couldn't just forget it for the rest of the story. So right. she can't take care of the baby deer properly. And on the right. ranch, they have the equipment to take care of wild animals. So, oh, so she, she has to go to the ranch. Well, she has to first give this baby deer away, just like she, you know, oh, so she yeah. has to give the baby deer to him and trust him with the baby deer. And then she does visit the baby deer at the ranch to make sure it's okay. So it's part of her healing also. And it keeps mm -hmm. them coming together and it gives them a connection, this little baby deer. I did that too with um, baby ocelots. That was in Texas Daddy. Baby ocelot. Do you remember that? That was the Texan's promise. And she's trying to save a ranch and he comes in. He's a marine biologist, a foundation of coastal animals. Right. I remember that. Yeah. And the kids go missing because together between the two of them, they have five kids. She's got two and he's got three. Oh, wow. And his mother is like babysitting all the kids and um, they come home and they can't find the kids anywhere. They're supposed to be in the garden, but they snuck out. So there's this moment of panic about where the kids yeah. are. And of course that kind of puts them together or she wasn't with him, but she calls him and she's like, Oh my gosh, you know, he leaves the kids here at the ranch and they're missing. And, um, and they go on this trail between the two cabins and they find the kids together. They find the kids and the kids had been following these kittens, what they thought were kittens, but they were actually, um, really rare ocelots. We have ocelots in Texas. Yes, we are. I they're native to Texas. That. They're native to Texas and they're really, and that's the fun part too, is to get to write something that isn't necessarily normal or commonplace. Right. So I got to do a lot of research on ocelots. And, um, That's cool. and they look like little kittens because it's not, uh, it's a wild cat, but it's not very big. Mm -hmm. And they used to be abundant on the Texas coast, but now they're really rare because they also, what happened to this poor mother is she, they get hit by a lot of cars. And so the babies were trying to find, you know, and so the children were following what they thought were kittens, but they weren't. So that kind of gives the hero because he's trying to get the ranch as a sanctuary because on the coastline with the turtles and stuff, he's like, you've got ocelots on your property. So right. it's kind of like, and they're like endangered. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of like, oh, you're using the ocelots against me. <laughs> so that was fun. And it brought all their kids together and it's a blended family story. Right. So the kids were kind of like fighting for custody because they were like, we found them first. They're on our property. So the kids are fighting for custody for the kids, for the kittens. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of fun. So yeah, doing research, introducing education. That's kind of fun to get to educate people about it. I did another sanctuary story and that's when, this is before the Tiger King thing came out. So I wrote this story about six or seven years ago. And in that research, I found out that we in Texas, we have, or maybe it's the United States, we have more tigers in captivity than there are in the wild. Now, is that like privately owned or zoos? Yes, and that's not a good thing. No. It's privately owned, right? People are obsessed with owning tigers, and tigers are not meant to be in large groups. So in this book, they have to go and rescue a tiger. It's an older tiger and a baby cub from a house that's it's actually like a drug bust. 
yeah. and they go in to do a drug bust and they find these wild animals so she has to go out and the hero has to go out and collect the animals to bring them back to the sanctuary where she tries to and it's based on the sanctuary that's out here in Kendall County where people can't go look at the animals because it's a true sanctuary for the animals because right. as wild animals they shouldn't have a lot of human interaction right and so that's what they turn out of that's a large place so they minimize human action interaction with the wild animals and that makes sense. take them back to where they're supposed to be so yeah it's an opportunity to um educate a little bit do some research that's the book terry's the one that helped me start that book because baby bats have you seen baby bats um i've seen bats i assume baby bats are just little pink tiny little things with big old eyes are they pink like no mice? they're dark they're black oh. but um or brown and they are so cute and you have a little bottle and you bundle oh them up gosh. like a burrito That's because so they all they like to be wrapped up and so in that book um and that connects because he's trying to reconnect with her and the children so the baby bats are the way that they kind i of remember reconnect. that one yeah and also it's a plot point because the kids want to the twin girls are obsessed with the baby bats right Mm -hmm. So, but they're not supposed to hang out because they're wild animals. And the mom's like, we need to keep as little human interaction as possible so that right. they can go back into nature and live the way they're meant to live. So, but the girls are like obsessed with them. So he buys a camera so the girls can watch it. And later that camera, the bat cam becomes a critical plot point. So it's oh, like a setup. And right. So you use animals in a lot of different ways. You can get really creative um, animal disasters, like if you have a missing dog or your horse gets sick, that can bring the hero and heroine together. They also kind of, you know, like they're maybe fighting over a horse or whose dog is it? I don't, you know, there's different right, ways that you yeah. can bring in. How other ways do you think you could use animals in a story? I mean, if someone has like an animal sanctuary or something like that, um, they own a ranch where they have, where they take care of animals, uh, ranch animals or or uh, farm animals and somebody some land developer person you know some someone who works for land development or people who want to build something there like mm -hmm. they want to buy the ranch buy the land and build something there you know kind of right. that obvious conflict of environmental issues versus yes. land and development issues yeah because everyone wants to save the animals not everyone but we don't like those people people who want to read those books <laughs> want to save the animals your hero and heroines want to save the animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use animals to show relationships. Can they act as a foil? They. I would character? think. I would think you could do that too. I do think for emotionally closed off characters, if they have a dog, you know, they can talk to the right. dog. Right. So yeah. you can go um, a lot deeper into a POV, and it's an interaction mm -hmm. instead of just all this internal. They can actually talk to the dog. Right. I've had characters talk to horses. Yeah. Um, you had a character talk to cupcakes. I did have a character talk to cupcakes. <laughs> but it is, I guess but she great... was debating whether to eat the cupcake or not. Oh. And so, because her <laughs> father had always told her that her hips were too big. Oh, my gosh. Her ex-husband had criticized her sides. So, so she couldn't eat cupcake without guilt. So mm -hmm. she had a whole conversation about the cupcake. And, of course, the hero over here is in, like, just eat the cupcake. <laughs> That's funny. But I think the perfect example of the foil, like I asked that question, is the character with the baby fawn. She's like hard and doesn't want people to help her, but she wants to help this baby fawn. That kind of reminded me of the time you and dad found a baby fawn, I think. Oh, yeah. It had been, it was on the road. Um, I think it had been hit, but it was still alive and it could get up and walk, but then it would fall down. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it had broken bones or internal injuries, but it was just laying there and it went off to the side of the road and if you can get close to it and it's not going to run away, something's wrong. Right. So what y'all do? We got a large, um, we had some large tubs here and we went back and put it in the tub and then we took it out to the, that Kendall County, um, rescue area right. and mm -hmm. let them decide if it needed, I don't know if he needed to be put down or if he could be rehabbed. I don't, mm -hmm. we don't know, but we just didn't want to leave him there. Right. And back in the day, you know, growing up with the rancher people, they would have probably just shot it to get it out of its memory. But me and your dad are not the kind of people that can just yeah. shoot a baby deer. Yeah. Without knowing for sure that it's got, you know, mm -hmm. something wrong with it. That's like great hero stuff. Like dad, like picking up the baby fawn and like putting it in a blanket. And I putting take it in pictures. The box. Yes. 
I think if you're hero, like you have a really hard kind of rough tortured hero, but they're really sweet with animals. Well, like I, I think, yeah, that can reveal a truth about a character. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my last book, the unexpected, I always get my titles confused. Unexpected... I thought it was a surprise. Something surprise. No, no, no. The was holiday the book out? with the baby. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of surprises too. The, the Texans unexpected holiday. Oh, okay. the Texans unexpected holiday. That was my last book out. Right. And he is a total hermit. Um, he's a double amputee, but all he does is hang out with his horses and his dogs, Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> That's cute. And um, yeah, he has Hansel and Gretel there, um, the big like army dogs. So they look really scary. And that's basically his point. He points out that, you know, until you get to know him, mm -hmm. people assume that the worst about right. them. So when they look at him, they assume the worst. And there's also, there's a horse king i think king is the name of the horse that he can't get it's the first horse he hasn't been able to get like breakthrough with right but the the horse immediately loves the heroine right oh uh, of so course it's kind of like oh. mm, traitor so <laughs> right so because he knows this horse is on a danger list is being put down if it's because it's unpredictable and people see it as violent right that he will be put down if he can't be um but you know the horse doesn't understand this he's just reacting out of fear right but he's had trauma. So with her help, he gets through the trauma for the horse. Mm -hmm. And because they're working through the trauma with the horse, they work through their own trauma. Right? right. So animals can be used in a lot of ways. And I think animals can make the story realistic. If, yeah. you, if you truly treat your animal like a yeah. real three-dimensional character. Mm -hmm. Because most people, a lot of people have... Um, some sort of animal in their life. The book I'm writing right now, I have a um, Chihuahua Border Collie mix. Oh my gosh. And they've, they've somehow trained it. I mean, it might not be, I don't know if you can actually do this with the Border Collie Chihuahua mix, but in my story, the family has trained it to herd animals. <laughs> Well, so it's a border collie. Then he has, right. um, yeah, no, the border collie instincts are yeah. still going to be there. Mm -hmm. But in a Chihuahua mix... <laughs> See, that's the that's the part that the animals can bring humor to your story, right? Yeah, yeah. So animals can bring humor. They can bring you got those good fills, like mm -hmm. the reason we watch puppies and kitty cats in videos doing silly things. Right. Because, you know, we love watching a puppy romp around in some flowers. Yeah. Or a chihuahua mix acting like a big herding dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. Because the hero doesn't like the dog and the dog doesn't like the hero. So they kind of have like a little com competition going on. A little standoff. So, and it's like a really old dog and it's still like running around and jumping and like hurting the sheep. And he's like, oh, that dog is possessed by a demon or something. That's, <laughs> That's funny. funny. Why do we put animals on the covers? Like, what does that do marketing wise? Well, I think it's the same thing that when you're flipping through Facebook and you see a puppy video and you stop and you watch it and you don't know mm -hmm. who that puppy is, but you're like, oh, this is so sweet. Yeah. I mean, the same reason people love their animal post because yeah. we... now I do have to say, oh, I forgot about this on Texas Daddy with the fawn opening. He also has horses and there's a thing with his daughter being injured on a horse. And mm -hmm. so horses are a big part of the story. And, um, and he has a set of blue healers that his daughter named when she was little named them um, beauty and beast. Oh, right. And I sent him tons of pictures of blue healers or might've been red healers. I don't remember now if they were red or blue healers. They look the same except different coloring pattern. And, um, on the cover is the dad, the little girl, mm -hmm. the horse and a golden retriever. Oh no. <laughs> and I was like, I told my editor, it's oh, like, no, that's a, there's not a golden retriever on this ranch. I don't know where that dog came from, but mm. I sent you lots of pictures of healers. But, so the book went they, out. They don't have pictures of So healers. it's a stray dog, apparently, roaming around on the ranch that made it to the cover. Oh. That's one reason I was so a, excited a about golden this. golden healer. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. That was weird. But I'm like, did they just randomly put, like, that, I mean, that's, like, I think the, the golden retriever is, like, a really popular family dog. Yeah. And I mean, in that air bed, wasn't he a golden? Oh receiver? yeah, he was. Yeah. So he's a really positive image for a dog. So mm -hmm. I guess they went with that, yeah. which really offended my whole blue healer community. They felt very slighted. Oh my gosh. Did they? <laughs> I got tons of letters. Oh gosh. Imaginary letters <laughs> from her imaginary friends. Oh, um, real. Well, Terry's cover is the cartoon style. Mm -hmm. Oh, her um, new book? And your love-inspired covers and, like, your cover with the guy that looks like Jensen Ackles and the German Shepherd is more realistic looking. 
do you think one is stronger than the other marketing wise? Like people are more drawn to the cartoon style dog or the more realistic dog? Oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. I would think that there is a market for that cartoon. It's become popular and it's a very mm-hmm. rom-com feel to it. Yeah. That you know you're going to get a really fun, light read mm-hmm. um, with, you know, all the good, warm heart feels. Yeah. And then with the more realistic cover, because my hero looks a little, um, well, it says, is he ready to be a family man? And it talks about him being a loner. So, you know, this is going to be a little bit more of a, it's still a romance and you've got the dog that looks like he's chasing the birds, right? So right. Cute. But that's that's a different feel. And mm-hmm. so the reader gets different expectations for that. It would be interesting to ask. So you don't who's... want all the covers to look the same. No. I, I don't like it when they all start looking the same. There right. for a while you were seeing lots of cowboy hats on yeah. everyone. Yeah. It was like, I like a good cowboy story, but, mm. you know, let's change it up a little bit. Yeah. Well, on Facebook, I went and posted a podcast question. I asked, what does having a pet or pets mean to you? And I have a bunch of my friends respond. A bunch? Mm -hmm. Now who has imaginary friends? A bunch. I have a bunch, okay? My friend Amelie, Amelie, she said pets are like family. To me, a home isn't a home without an animal or two in it. They also help with depression, etc. It's hard to feel down when you a cute, fluffy critter is cuddled up to you. And I couldn't agree more. I also have Alex Williams. She said, it's a reason to work hard even on the bad days. A reason not to let depression win as my pets still need a good life. And even on the days I can't force myself out of bed for my own sake, I can for theirs. And that's also, I see that a lot, is that people have like a cat or a dog. They get up. Especially with a dog. Mm -hmm. You have to go up and walk. A woman that I worked with who was diagnosed with diabetes and her doctor actually told her she needed to get out and walk more, right? Mm -hmm. And so we had um, a really kind of cute poodle mix show up at our school. And she took him home and named him Cooper after our school because her doctor told her it was a good thing like getting a pet can help because it gives you a reason to get up and go and do stuff Mm -hmm. so she would take Cooper on her walk every day so that's That's yes very much so my cousin Audrey what pets mean Audrey's always grown up with animals yeah what pets mean to her is hair true oh my gosh she had the biggest German shepherd from Germany oh do you remember him he came Thanksgiving beautiful dog she still has him massive he's huge he is like a ton of hair. I mean, he's just like oh my all this hair. And he would just get up on the couch because he thinks he's a small dog. He's one of those right. big dogs with a small dog. Like, yeah. I'll sit in your lap. And, oh my gosh, to get all the hair out was, it took us like hours. Oh my gosh. Because we weren't supposed to have dogs at that cabin. Our dog, Selena, sheds like crazy. Yes, but not anything like her German no, Shepherd. But, but yes. It's still a lot. Yes, there's dog hair. We need to get a, um, a Roomba. That's, it, what, uh, that's what dad wants. Yeah. It's a Roomba. Did Audrey say anything else? Quality vacuum? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's because they eat food off the floor. No, for the hair. Oh, mm, interesting. I always get excited. The only time I let the dogs in the kitchen is when I drop food. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. They actually are good vacuum cleaners in the kitchen. Uh, She said, and all the happy feels, which is true. And her and Katrina are a lot alike. Every time they turn around, they've got a new animal. Mm -hmm. I looked up online, and one of the reasons why dogs are good for people is that they increase our oxytocin levels, mm-hmm. and oxytocin is known as the love hormone or something yes, like that. Yes, the feel good mm-hmm. releases all those feel yeah. good emotions. Yeah, well, that's the thing with the puppies and the kittens mm-hmm. playing. And so when you put them on the cover, or mm-hmm. you have that really cute scene, because like sometimes you use animals for a plot point mm-hmm. or to reveal character, but you also use them just for a really cute scene. Like I had, I think, in Lone Star Christmas, they were at a restaurant, and next door at the feed store, there was a thing of puppies, and because his dad got remarried to a younger woman, now he's actually left his guardianship for his two little brothers who are like six and eight. And they find these, the boys go missing. Well, they find them and they're in this little, at the feed store next door to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they're just surrounded by puppies. So it's just a really cute scene. And she gets in the pen with them. Of course, he's like having a heart attack because he's like, oh my God, I lost these two kids. I've only had them for like less than a day. (laughs) And, um, but it's a really, ends up being a really cute scene with just the puppies, you know, climbing on the kids. And, oh, I had a goat scene too. That was the opening of the... Texan surprise return they're doing family Christmas pictures in the barn and they have um, Christmas sweaters on a bunch of baby goats because she's got triplets her sons are 
she's got triplets and so the triplets are playing with the baby goats Aww. that have christmas sweaters on and that nothing but absolute cuteness is the only reason that scene is written <laughs> Your cousin Kathy? Oh, yeah. Gender? That's where um, Katrina got the two, Bishop yeah. and Deacon. She said uh, pets mean love to her. Just She just says love with hearts. And I was like, that's simple and true. Yep. Aunt Jan says they bring joy and youth. I get up in the morning looking at joyful, exuberant faces and can't help but get excited and joyful myself. Love having fur babies. And that kind of reminded me of the times when I think Elvis was still here. So we had Elvis and Selena mm -hmm. and you would come home and you'd be, you'd be like, it's nice. Cause it's these like excited. They're always excited when you come uh, home. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are, <laughs> those dogs are happy to see you. <laughs> They don't have any agenda. They don't care about the dishes right. or the dinner being done or the traffic they just drove through. They are just happy in the moment and happy to see you. <laughs> it's so cute. They'll like, jump on you. I'm trying to get Juvia They're not, not supposed to jump. to jump on you. Yeah. But, you know, rolling over. Selena tends to roll over and show her your belly. Oh, yeah. belly. Of course, she's you, got... you encourage Juvia. I don't encourage her. I just yes, don't like do. <laughs> make her stop. She doesn't do it that often. And she usually no. only does it like when I walk into your room. Yeah, it's super weird. <laughs> I don't know why she, she doesn't does jump that. on me any other time. Like other than when I walk on into your room to talk to you and she's like, no, ignore storm. Look at me. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. She is weird. Uh, Kaya, my friend Kaya. I've known Kaya since kindergarten and we've been best friends ever since. Next door neighbor. So we always, I grew up with her basically. Yeah, they always had animals. They always too. had animals. Um, she said pets mean life. And I, for Kaya, that's definitely oh, well, she, her life. Doesn't entire she life work is her at animals. Petland? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, up in She's like a manager at Petland. Dallas, Fort Worth area. Mm -hmm. I can't remember she where. She worked Fisco, at the one Fisco? here in San Antonio and then she moved up mm -hmm. there. But she, yeah, she's had animals she's had geese they had a cow at one point oh i did not know they had that cattle yeah it wasn't for very long i don't think um they had they've had cats like all kinds of cats they used to have a dog named honey do you remember honey i do remember honey so yeah they and they were always rescuing animals uh loretta rodriguez oh said, love loretta animals pets mean everything love my fur babies She's got a few too. She's got yeah. quite a few. I think she just got a new one. I think I just saw a new one on Facebook. See, we see the puppies. We're like, oh, look at these. I know. It's so cute. I think um, Charlotte on mine mentioned the donkeys make great pets. Oh. And then I was like, oh, They are yeah. companion animals. Yeah, they are companion animals. And I know, like, growing up in the hill country, that you would have donkeys out with sheep and goats. Cause yeah, because they, they will protect, protect yeah. right, against um, coyotes and mm -hmm. bobcats and stuff. And then she said, um, she responded and said, yes, that they have with their cattle. They keep a donkey with oh, their cattle. That's... And they're just big pets. And they are. So. Mm -hmm. But I think donkeys can be, but also when in high school, I volunteered to work with Kendall County Rescue mm -hmm. and um, we would see people think donkeys are cute and I guess they'd get one and then they just kind of abandon it. Yeah. So that's always kind of sad. That is sad. So um, when you get to read about the animals, you can enjoy the animal without having to, right. you know, the responsibility of an animal. That's a good point. Yeah. Angora goats. We grew up with Angora goats. Oh, yeah. A lot of people think they're sheep when they see them. Linda Kirkpatrick, mm -hmm. shout out for the Angora goats. Yeah. Um, actually, my dad bought, I think, their um, ram they bought from Linda. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I remember cool. when I was younger going out and they had a they had their place out in Lakey and they had big pens of, and they had this one giant. Angoras tend not to get too big, but they had one ram that was a buck. I think they call him buck with Angoras. Mm -hmm. He was so big. I remember being kind of scared of him. Yeah. But my dad bought some Angoras from them. Angora hair is so fine. Yeah, it is. Of course, Katrina wants a zoo, my I daughter. Know. <laughs> and they want to buy property so they can have more animals. Oh and I'm like, gosh. I don't know. It limits you, though, too. Like, traveling mm -hmm. and being spontaneous. I mean, they already have trouble sometimes getting someone to Cause they've got watch the their animals. And the two boys are so big. I know. And it was so much more manageable when it was just Kyan and Elvis. Yeah, the two you could manage before. <laughs> um, Eleanor talks... Oh, Eleanor has... Um, she posts pictures of her parrot all the time. She has... Oh, my um, gosh. I saw that one, picture. Know, it's so silly. It's so Parrots cute. have so much personality. They do. This one's a 17-year-old. You know what? I don't think I've ever written a story with a parrot. My mm. mom had birds. My mom liked I remember birds. your mom had birds. I remember. Yeah. 
So maybe I should do a story. And you know what? I've always had cats growing up. She had parakeets, right? She had different type. Oh, okay. Yeah, she had parakeets a lot. But she also had a parrot once. And, oh, Eleanor has like five parrots. I don't know why. Birds kind of freak me out. Like whenever I'd go visit Kaya at Petland. Because Kaya loves the parrots. But I don't know why they freak me out. I feel like, I guess I feel like they're going to poop on me or something. (laughs) Maybe it's a leftover from something else. Did you ever get attacked? Uh, in elementary school, bird did poop on me, and I hated it. And then at the beach, do you remember at the beach when we would like put bread on our heads, on our heads, on our head, so the seagulls will come and eat it? Well, I That's yeah, so vaguely. That's stupid. Why would you do that? I don't understand. I don't do not know. put bread on your head. Seagulls are, I don't know, they yeah. kind of scary. They get vicious. They do. And like, there's two of them, and all of a sudden... There's like millions. You, you can't <laughs> see through the fog of seagulls. It's so scary. Yeah, I just, I didn't set out to write um, animals in my books. Well, animals have always been part of your life, like you said, so right. I think it just ingrained... And I think, though, when you decide to put an animal in the book, you have to be conscientious that it's a character and treat it like a character. And yeah. I enjoy reading books that have really strong animal characters in them. Yeah, me too. Of course, do you want to read a book with weak characters? No. I think Kelly said something about that. Like, there should <laughs> no ever be any... So, to say that you're going to write a strong character implies that everyone else is writing weak characters? I don't know. Right. So, but a well-developed animal... Mm-hmm. If you're going to have an animal in the story, make sure that they're well-developed. And they can add a lot to it. They can give your hero and heroine so many things to do. Mm-hmm. and reveal things you can use them for showing not telling um they just warm and cuddly they can bring humor mm-hmm. they can bring emotional oh in the secret um not the secret the texan's unexpected return he had an amnesia and everyone thought he was dead right and he comes oh. back and this the dog that he gave her when they were little well not little they were teenagers he couldn't keep the dog because his dad was super abusive and his dad was they found this puppy and he gave it to the heroine they were friends at the time and he told her that the dog would protect her. Well, so they had the dog through their marriage, her growing up and through their marriage. And when he comes home, the dog is like super old. But it's like she stayed alive long enough to protect the family. Aww. So when he comes to the house for the first time since they all thought he was dead, the dog comes out. And it's like really emotional scene. You've seen them. Th- you've seen the return of the soldiers and their dogs. So it was like, it was kind of like this. And because they had the triplets. And so the, the dog is like protector. And now that he's home, the dog can rest mm-hmm. finally. So I think dogs can add a lot of emotional stuff that maybe in you know, a character can't um, safely show but through the dog that emotion can be expressed Mm -hmm. whether it's the adult character or a child that's um, faced trauma in a story yeah animals in real life can be very therapeutic and um in your stories you can use them that way too where they can go deeper into emotions and create scenes that you couldn't have without them Right. So we need dogs. We need we cats. We need horses. Mm-hmm. We need parrots. We need furry, fur and babies. Goats. Fur babies. Fur babies. All the fur babies. All the fur babies. What about fish? Scale babies. <laughs> Water babies. <laughs> Water babies. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it's the reptiles. People like snakes. Kaya. Oh, lizards. Oh, one of my favorite books that Belle Calhoun wrote. Well, she has a lot of favorites for me, but the, the heroine's in a wheelchair, but the hero's pet is a lizard. Oh, so that's really cool. It was like, I don't think I'd seen a lizard before as a pet. Didn't Terry have a book with reindeer in it? I mean, they were. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is the one that got made into a movie. Yes. But that reindeer was always causing. He was getting out all the time. <laughs> so cute. I used to know his name. Oh, big. the book was called um, Sleigh Bell Sweethearts. Yes. And the movie was called Northern Lights of Christmas. Oh, yeah, that's it. So the book was um, Sleigh Bell Sweethearts, a super cute book. And her reindeer were very, um, very realistic. She did a good job with it. And part of it is the heroine inherited this reindeer farm and she was mm-hmm. going to sell it. But the people that were going to buy it were going to turn the reindeer into like hot dogs or something. And oh so she God. couldn't, she could not sell it because she wanted to protect the reindeer, right? right. Um, in the movie, I think they, they didn't like the whole idea of reindeer being turned into hot dogs so they right. made it i think they did cutting down the more, trees or more something. family friendly yeah so the book is called sleigh bell sweethearts sleigh bell sweethearts and the movie is called northern lights of christmas yes with the reindeer 
So it's a really, you read the book or see the movie. It's really cute. They actually, in the movie, after they had, they had four reindeer there and someone's like, we need more reindeer. And they found out how much it was to rent the reindeer. Oh, gosh. So they're like, they nope, like, nope, four's good. <laughs> <laughs> no herd. Mm. So the herd was off behind the trees or somewhere. That's funny. But yeah, so reindeer is another animal. So yeah, we have all the different animals that bring a lot of richness to our stories. Authors are wise to look at our furry friends to create um, deeper, more involved emotional stories. The quote for today to end our episode is from Jane Goodall because she studied chimpanzees and apes. So I thought it'd be, you know, pretty fitting to get a quote from her. And I picked, you cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. I thought that was a good quote. That's actually really true. And so, Mm -hmm. and how you treat animals Mm -hmm. impacts the world also. Yep. Go out there and make a positive impact, people. Please. And thank you. Thanks for listening to our podcast. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Why do you say bye like that? Bye. Goodbye, fellow (laughs) humans. I'm just wondering why you say bye like that. Farewell. Good day.